Okay. Okay. Cool. So, seeing as I'm here, I'll do a little descriptive video. Uh, so, that someone else who has a 940, same as mine, could maybe solve some of their issues that they're having. I just realized. Oh no, that's fine, that's a clip. Right, cool. Okay, okay, okay. So, I had a vacuum leak and I didn't know where it was coming from. So, I did what anyone else would do and I replaced everything. I took off every single air duct, uh, cold air, hot air intake from the turbo. I took the turbo off, took all these off, cleaned them. Took all the stupid little fucking metal clips that were on there and just threw them to fuck. <clears throat> Tightened everything up. Put new Jubilee straps on where I could. New MAF sensor. Nice big air intake. It's not big enough yet, but it'll do for now. And then I started replacing these little vacuum lines. I did that one. I did the fuel pressure regulator one. I took off the PVC system and completely cleaned it out. I sealed up this and I jubileed it on the other side because that was also easy to come off. I thought that might have been the problem. Probably a good thing I did clear out the system because it was pretty disgusting. <clears throat> I even place the vacuum lines coming off of our carbon filter from our intake manifold took these off I took out the idle control valve cleaned that I even replaced my throttle position sensor even though there's nothing wrong with the old one I just did it anyway and it turned out that it was not the brake booster it was an actual fucked. <coughs> my intercooler down here from that point all the way up to there the metal had just come away and the little rubber strip was sticking out so there was a hole put my hand in front turned the throttle cable and what do you know it air came gushing out after the MOF sensor as you can see ends here across here into the intake messed up my ECU car stalled all the time. Every time I stopped at traffic lights, every came out to roundabout, if I changed gear too slowly, the car would stall. And that was the cause. So, if you have stalling issues in your car, and all your intake and your vacuum lines seem okay, and your fuel filter is clean, you don't need to worry about the fuel pump on these, because the fuel pumps don't pump at any sort of pressure that would cause the fuel pressure in the rail to drop and the fuel pump or on this car anyway is relatively indestructible so if you have these stalling issues like I had check your intercooler take it off it's so easy there's a bolt there there's a bolt there you take this side off you take that side off and the thing just lifts out it couldn't be, couldn't be easier. So that happened. As you can see, I have no viscous fan. Because, who wants a viscous fan? They're heavy. They're expensive to replace. They're heavy on their mileage. Uh, and they pose a massive threat to your radiator. If, like mine, you have really shitty radiator bottom brackets and your radiator falls off, they'll destroy your radiator. So, I got rid of mine, and I put in this awesome eBay Universal Electric Fan. It's about 20 quid, but you can get them all the way from £13 all the way up to 40 odd. I got a 12 inch push on puller, and I honestly say this thing is amazing. The bedding's on it are really sweet, it's quiet, the wires coming out of the motor are very good quality, and they're very really well sealed. And it seals itself around the radiator very easily, and I think it's definitely worth buying. What you will have to buy though, if you want to do it quite simply like what I did, is one of these. Which is uh, your 
um, your electric fan control switch. Now, thanks to someone who I will tag in the description because I can't remember right now. I think it was a humble mechanic. He showed me how to wire these things up and they are very, very simple. If we... Oh. That is amazing for plugging any little holes, any little pinholes or even cracks in your intercooler. Once this stuff goes off, it's hard as shit and it's very, very weather resistant. It sticks to anything. So, you've got your your controller here. This is your positive main lead, which wires directly onto your battery. Your black lead, which is this little one here, which goes directly to the earth of the car. Your yellow one is your switch controller, or your ignition. And what I did was I scotch, what's it called, is that a scotch? Those little fast bracket things. I put one straight onto the lights, which are yellow on this car. Obviously, 90s model. Very, very simple. This was yellow, which means ignition, which means yellow wires in here are obviously ignition, especially when it's lights. I went onto one of these. Don't know which one, but it doesn't really matter because this thing won't come on until the key is turned on in the ignition. Now this is a dual controller, so it operates too, and it also has an AC cable as well. But this car doesn't have any of that fancy stuff, uh, so I don't need it. So I just taped up the ends, curled up. They do come ready, fused. And the switch is so easy to operate. Once you turn the ignition on, temperature comes up, current temperature. And to set your temperature so that it turns on the fan, all you do is press that button until you get the desired temperature and it goes from 40 degrees all the way up to 110 on this car I've got mine set to 90 because the coolant thermostat uh, opens at 88 so when I'm kind of sitting idle this thing will kick in at 90 and I don't know which way is pull and which way is push but when I wired this in my fan one cable to my blue lead and my black is my earth which I just found a screw any fucking body screw take it off sand it up to make it look all nice and shiny put a ring fixing on it bolt it back in and that is your earth it doesn't need to go to a negative line it just needs to be earth the car and that turned it into a pool fan so I'm guessing if you swap these wires over that makes it a pusher and the last thing, you get two options of this. This here is detachable. You can either wire that into a thermostat switch, which goes in line on your uh, thermostat opening side, and that will read the temperature directly from the coolant, or you can do what I did, and just jam in your temperature probe to the top corner of your radiator top obviously being hotter than the bottom which would make sense because heat rises and when that opens to let the coolant flow that temperature spikes here quickest so I jammed it in the corner there just put a little bit of sticks on just to hold it in place and it works absolutely beautifully I think what we'll do is I'll get the key just so you can See. It's many, many keys for many, many cars. My little MR2. Don't know if you can see, but I also have a Triumph Trident 900 and a Honda CBR 750, which is currently sold. So I just have a Triumph. Technically, so put a key in as you can see, all the controller is off. Turn the ignition on, go around here, and oh, would you look at that? We are currently sitting at 15 degrees, 
and as you can see push the button oh 85 degrees that's when my phone kicks in so i like it to kick in just a little bit sooner because i don't like things heating up in fact i'm going to set that to 89 so they're just one after the other straight on and that's it it couldn't be simpler so yeah highly recommend uh, humble mechanic he's very good at showing you wiring these things in because that's how I learnt and if you have yourself a nice old Volvo just like I do then I recommend buying an electric van a cheap one from eBay because they're all the same if you buy it from a company all you're doing is paying for that company's name you're not actually for the baseline ones you're not getting any better value because it's the same as the cheap Chinese things you get on eBay Buy yourself an electric fan, buy yourself a controller switch. The only one I could find in the UK was from Demon Tweaks and it was about £45. So it was twice, almost two and a half times the price of the fan. But definitely, definitely worth it. Saves you a lot of hassle. Takes a wee bit of time to wire it in. It's a bit fiddly trying to find somewhere to put it. I didn't have any extra wiring, I didn't have any extra fittings, I didn't have any extra screws, I just used what came with it and I made it work, as you can see it's not very pretty but I'll do that and tidy it up later on but for now this car is a daily project, it's working pretty good yeah so, top it off electric fan very easy, very worthwhile doing and very easy to do right colour coding on these cars very simple but just in case get yourself a manual and if you have a stalling issue like I had check all your vacuum lines take off your air lines your air hosing and just clean it and put it all back on again take your PVC system off PCV system off if you want completely strip that out you don't have to take the throttle body to take these off and you can actually get it out without removing anything you just take that top tube off under the two bolts and just the thing just lifts out it's, you don't need to take your throttle body off and like a lot of people say you do but you don't if you actually just try you don't have to get it off at all, it's not that hard but yeah, check your intercooler, check your air lines, check your vacuum lines took me a, took me a good few amount of pounds to find the problem but turned out it was a crack that I could have fixed with a little bit of sticks like shit. But replacing everything is still good. So, yeah. <coughs> Let's look at my engine. You should probably know that I have super chipped this car. So because it's still the little 13C turbo which is a little tiny and I've got the LPT removing this holding the wastegate shut gives you full boost all the way up to redline after chipping the car and it is a fucking animal 